The Adventures of the Saint, starring Vincent Price. The Saint, based on characters created by Leslie Charteris, are known to millions from books, magazines, and motion pictures. The Robin Hood of modern crime is now transcribed for radio, starring Hollywood's brilliant and talented actor Vincent Price as... The Saint. Help! Help! Come on. No, no, no. Hey, what's going on here? This is my car here. Uh... No, no, no. Stop hey, it. Hey, cut it out. Stop it. What's the idea? Now let that man alone. Look, you keep out of this, buddy, or I'll... Well, it ain't the same. <laughs> it's euphonic, but slightly ungrammatical, Mac. Now, what's the disturbance? Uh, they drew up alongside of my car. Him and the other fella, they said, get out. We're taking your car. Why, Mac wouldn't do a thing like that, now would you, Mac? No, of course not. The old man's nuts. What Mac would do if he coveted his neighbor's jalopy is slug him with a piece of lead pipe and drive off. Yeah, so good night. I get business. Now, wait, Mac. You could satisfy my curiosity a little. Why should you want to steal this gentleman's old automobile when you've got nicer, newer ones to choose from? Yes, uh, ask him, mister. Ask him. Yeah, ask me, Saint. Go ahead. I'm going to satisfy a little curiosity of my own. I didn't think you had any, Mac. <laughs> what shape does it take? I always wondered how you'd look dead. Good night, all. Good night, Mac. Be seeing you. You... You let him go. Yes, he convinced me that I should for now. There's nothing like a thirty-two in the pocket of a known thug for winning an argument. Did you uh, say there was another fellow with him? Uh, yes. Uh, run off when he heard you coming. It was the same fellow tried to buy my car yesterday. Someone tried to buy this <laughs> this car? Oh, sure. This fellow tried to buy it. And there was a woman made an offer, too. Did you mean you actually refused? I ain't selling until I find out why they want to buy it so bad. This fellow who tried to buy the car, do you know his name? No, he he looked like a gentleman until... Until you found him consorting with felonous intent with our just-departed friend, eh? <laughs> Tell me, was he uh, well-dressed and annoying little mustache placed just over the sneer he wears for a mouth? Well, well yes. Say, how did you... That's easy. Our friend Mac does piecework for him. Fancy Dan Turner is his current alias. But I see you don't keep up with such things. You're going to tell the police? Later, perhaps, when there's something to tell them. Right now, I've got a great thirst that needs quenching. A thirst for knowledge. Huh? Yeah, what's your name and where do you live? Uh, Collins. Uh, 302 East 8th Street. Mm -hmm. Now, put your car in cold storage, old timer, and take care of yourself. Something tells me this is rat's night out. Hmm, hello, Smitty. Back making book, I see. You got the wrong joint, Saint. Take a look around. I run a pool room. You interested in a horse? No, no, a man. Well, like I said, Saint, you got the wrong joint. His name's Mac. He hangs out here. Now, where is he? In the back room? I'm the three monkeys, Saint. Deep, dumb, and blind. The only Mac I know is a truck. Oh, then if you don't mind, I'd like to look in your back room and see if he's parked there. I mind. But you won't even know, Smitty. You're deep, dumb, and blind. Oh, have a heart, Saint. I ain't got no back room. And besides, last time you dropped in my place, a, a lot of my customers started patronizing elsewhere. Including you, Smitty, remember? I've only been back from the gray place a week, and I ain't forgetting it. Oh, come on, Saint. Be a good guy. Beat it, huh? No, no, Smitty. Let him stay a while. Hello, Mac. I was hoping you were smart enough to go home and get some sleep. How could I sleep with you out roaming the streets, Mac? You know how I worry. Yeah, yeah. Too much. What does he want, Smitty? You. Why, Saint? I want to talk with Fancy Dan Turner. What about... Now, let's not be coy, Mac. It doesn't become you. I want to ask Turner why he's trying to steal a jalopy from an old man. Well, what do you know? I got a surprise for you, Saint. I'll take it to him. The boys say you're looking for me, Saint. Mm, the boys are right. So you found me. So? I understand you're interested in a certain old car. So what? Probably the smiling Irishman is, too. 
A broken down 1929 sedan seems a little slow for a fast man like you, Fancy Dan. Well, maybe I like to go slow enough to read the billboards when I drive. What's it to you, Saint? It depends on what it is to you, Turner. What's on the fire? You are. There's a handle with care sign on this deal, and I don't want just anybody cutting in. You're a fouler upper. You've been stepping high and fancy free too long, Turner. You're beginning to irritate me. The feelings likewise, Saint. Only I got more than fingers in my fist and you haven't. Hmm, that's a nice gun you're so bravely wearing, Turner. It must be a pretty big part to change a small-time con artist like you into a fire-breathing gunman. Big potatoes, huh? Yeah, plenty big, Saint. So big I wouldn't hesitate to shoot at the slightest move. Am I clear? You couldn't be clearer if you were a day ordered by the Chamber of Commerce. Good. Now, it ain't a palace, Saint. It's just the back room of a pool parlor. But please stay and be my guest. Oh, very well. For a little while, anyway. Where are the boys? Out. And they're wasting their time. Collins won't sell his old wreck. Some old men are stubborn. And Collins seems like a hard man to intimidate. Well, that all depends on who's doing the intimidating, Saint. Now, Max is chowderhead, and Smitty's even worse, but put the two boys together, and you'll get a job of work done. Dan, I've adopted old man Collins as a friend. Ah, oh, how big are you? Yes. You know how I feel about people who push other people around, Turner? Especially when the guy getting the shoving is a friend. You know, if I had a glass of beer, I'd cry into it. Sit back and relax, Saint. The boys will be back with what they want after soon enough, and maybe then I'll let you go home. You mean they're coming back with a car? Well, maybe not the whole car. Sit back and relax. Hey, relax. Hey, 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 what are you doing? Sitting back with my chair to the wall, Turner. You want me to relax, don't you? Yeah, I... Hey, let go of that cue stick. Oh. As my old grandmother used to say, Turner, there's nothing as relaxing as a game of pool. <laughs> Particularly with a hoodlum's head as the cue ball. <laughs> Collins, Collins, open up. You, uh, you wouldn't be from the police now, would you? No, no, I'm no more a policeman than you are, old man Collins. <laughs> Come in and be welcome, Dad. Oh. Where's Collins? The old man, he's here. Where? Behind the sofa. But if you have a mind to look at him, make it a quick look. Dead? Very. How? Every way. Beaten, stabbed, and tortured. Maybe even shot, for all I know. Yes, and for all I know, maybe you've got a gun with an empty chamber, for all I know. Bless me, no. Me business doesn't allow it. <laughs> Just what sort of business are you in, Irish? The name's O'Brien. Ah. When a job is pulled and the police go after the boys who pull it, I make an end run and go after the swag. Or at least part of it. Oh, I see. Uh, what's the swag here? Collins' wallet? Not unless there's 400 grand in it. 400? Oh, no, I'm afraid you'll find the old man a few cents short. Who killed him? Not I. How do I know? You don't. You're right. What brought you here? Why, I'm here about the old car, of course. You want to buy it? Certainly, don't you? Say, maybe you're not being cute. Maybe you really don't know about the... About what? Well, now... <laughs> I'm greatly relieved. When I first saw you come through that door, I said to myself, O'Brien, oh, here comes some more competition. But I see you're not. I'm relieved, laddie. <laughs> greatly relieved. Turner is competition enough, eh? Yes, but Turner and his ugly ducklings are nothing compared to... It. Who? In time. I got here just a minute before you, laddie. The old man was dead when I arrived. Beyond that, I know nothing. Get down. O'Brien! Oh, O'Brien! Oh, Competition. Getting worse. All the time. Look, I'll call the doctor. No, no, no. Uh, thanks, laddie. Lay, lay off this frolic. He'll get you next. You're gonna die, mister. You're gonna... O'Brien, oh, the old man's car, what... Well, I guess I'll have to try another angle. This one's pretty dead.
I awakened Mr. Ritchie as you requested, Mr. Templer. He'll be right down. Oh, thank you. I hope the fire isn't too serious, sir. Well, it's serious enough to awaken Mr. Ritchie. Oh, oh, here he is now, sir. Well, well, which plant is the fire in? Who's responsible? How big is the damage? Oh, the fire isn't in any plant, Mr. Ritchie. What's that? Then, then, then where? It's where? inside of me. I'm burning up and I need your help. How dare you sneak your way in here at 3 o'clock in the morning by telling me there's a fire? Look here, who are you? Simon Templer. Oh, oh yes, the saint. Hmm. I've heard of you. If you have business with me, Mr. Templer, I suggest you phone my secretary for an appointment. Meanwhile, there's no subject on earth can keep me from going back to bed. Not even the subject of $400,000, Mr. Ritchie? What do you know about it? Nothing other than that it was stolen from you, Mr. Ritchie. That happened seven years ago. The criminal, John Quayley, was caught, tried, and convicted. Now, if you'll pardon but me... Quayley I... worked for you, I believe. He was my head accountant. And the money was never found? No. Quayley drew 20 years in the penitentiary. He never revealed where the money was hidden. Until the day he died. Died? Yes. Two weeks ago in prison. <laughs> and uh, now, Mr. Templer, if you don't mind, I need my arrest. I won't detain you much longer, Mr. Ritchie. Just one or two more questions. Well? Uh, did Quayley have a wife? Yes, he did. If he knew he were dying in prison, it's quite possible he made an attempt to get word to her, to tell her where the money was hidden. He may have made the attempt, but he couldn't possibly have succeeded. He was too closely watched. Oh. After all, $400,000 is a lot of money. A lot of money. Yes, you could almost buy a second-hand car with it. If I hadn't been fully covered by insurance, my firm would have gone under in the face of a loss that large. And uh, now, Mr. Templer, if I might ask a question... Certainly. Why this sudden urgency, this three o'clock in the morning business? An old man was tortured to death. Then a fellow named O'Brien, who came calling on the old man, was shot to death. But, but, but Before he was killed, O'Brien told me he was tracking down $400,000 that had been stolen. Oh, I see. Yeah, and some checking back over how many people have ever had that amount stolen from Led them. you to me? Yes. I wonder what I've led you to, Mr. Templer? I wonder, Mr. Ritchie. I wonder. <laughs> What is it? Mrs. Quayley? What do you want? Several things, Mrs. Quayley. Like what? A murderer. You've got the wrong apartment, mister. An old automobile. No sale. Anything else? Maybe you'll buy this, Mrs. Quayley. Collins was murdered a little while ago. Collins? Hmm. Oh, the old man. Why? Someone wanted his car. Someone who evidently couldn't wait any longer for the newer models. So? So I saw Collins' car in your garage, Mrs. Quayley. Maybe you better come in after all, mister. But come in careful. Careful enough. Keep those hands high. Sure. I don't like you, mister. You're nailing together a frame and you're trying to put my picture into it. Colin sold me that car. When? Tonight. I could have bought a Cadillac for cheaper, mister, but I wasn't in any position to haggle. Yes, I know. What do you know? That's what I want to find out. I know that Colin's car, the car, is worth about $20, but if something else, it's worth in the neighborhood of $400,000. And <laughs> you know that's an awfully nice neighborhood. It's nice and exclusive. Chiselers aren't invited to move in. Mm, I've been gathering that impression all evening. Well, what if we're here? You name it. An acetylene torch, welder's mask, a few chisels, a hammer, steel wire. <laughs> Either you've gone to work for Henry Kaiser or the hand that customarily rocks the cradle is going in for rocking a safe. I had to go into a hardware store to make a phone call, and I just couldn't leave without buying a few things. How fortunate you didn't make your call in an establishment that sells steamrollers. Yeah, I see you have a set of license plates. You see too much. From Collins Jalopy, aren't they? These license plates. <laughs> so that's how Quayley smuggled out his message. You're getting awfully close to a bullet in your head, mister. Give me those plates. Shh, there's someone at the door. Stay where you are. I'll see what it is. Better not take the license plates with you. Yes? Oh! Mrs. Quayley. Oh. Mrs. Is... The devil. The devil. He... He got the plane? Yes, yes, he got them. Don't let him. Oh, catch him there. Where? Where? Where Johnny worked. Shaft. Top. Before six. Before... Ah. Mrs. Quayley. Uh, Collins, O'Brien, and now... Now I have three reasons for wanting to meet a certain party. Tap. 
Taxi. Hey, hey, taxi, taxi. They uh, don't stop sometimes when it's so early in the morning, Saint, because they're on the way back to the garage. Well, what brings you out so early, Mac? Looking for a drunk to roll? Just looking for you, Saint, just looking for you. See here what I got in my hand? Oh, there goes that coy streak in you again, Mac. All right, so it's a gun. Well, what does he want me to do? Come, go, turn handsprings, quote Shelley, play the bassoon? You have to speak for it, Mac. Very funny. Look out, it shouldn't speak for itself, Saint. I and the gun, one you should get in that there car. Yeah, you have a most persuasive way of offering a fellow a lift, Mac. Yeah, yeah, a lift. Right now, it's a lift. Later on, it may grow into a ride. Hm. Come on. Uh, where are we going, Mac? Back to our little gray home in the rear of the pool room, Saint. Fancy Dan Turner wants he should thank you for showing him a new trick. Oh, it really isn't necessary. He feels like it is, Saint. He feels like it is. He's got a couple of tricks he wants to show you. Sounds like fun. Oh, on, there's the car, Jim. Turner's waiting. He's got very little patience. Nice to have you back with us, Saint. I missed you. <laughs> From the looks of that bandage on your skull, Turner, I'll bet you wished I'd missed you. Not now, I don't, Saint. It's a nice feeling having you here, knowing that I owe you something. I pay my debts, Saint. I pay off, as I know. O'Brien was paid off. So was Mrs. Qualey. Paid off with lead checks. They're dead? Oh, and I save that innocent expression for the jury, Turner. You'll need everything you've got. Well... When were they killed, Saint? Okay, I'll stooge for you. They were killed an hour or two after I so abruptly left you before. Oh, well, I'll have to find another pigeon, Saint. My alibi's fat. How fat, Turner? City Hospital. Having remember the Saint embroidered where a cue stick hit me. And Smitty and Mac were there, too, to see me through it. Hospitals have records, Saint. We're clean. We're clean. Huh. Then you've got a competitor you don't know about, Turner. Yeah, looks that way. For a job that was supposed to be as simple as this one, I got too many competitors. I wonder how come. Who fingered the job for you, Turner? Who told you Qualey got word out to his wife about where the money was? I got nothing for you, Saint. Well, Smitty, wasn't it? Smitty just finished a stretch up the creek. My guess is he ran into Qualey, maybe he shared a cell with him. No. It was in the jail hospital they met. Smitty worked there. Qualey was dying off his nut. Smitty made him talk. Yeah. And Smitty, not being mentally suited for solo work, spilled the pitch to you, Turner, for a price, of course, for money on the line. Yeah. Ten G's to buy in on a 400,000 job. But what are you driving at? What are you picking Smitty's bones for? I was just wondering, Turner, how much O'Brien paid Smitty for his slice of this exclusive information and how much your other competitors shelled out. The one who happily goes around killing people. What do you mean? If you ask me, Turner, your pal Smitty is the sort of rat that even rats on rats. He sold Qualey's secret three times that we know of. Hey, thanks for handicapping it for me, Saint. Well, if you're really grateful, Turner, you can return the favor by telling me, uh, what time is it? It's, uh, 5.15 in the morning, Saint, but you ain't going nowhere. I have a date to keep before six, Turner, with your competitor. Yeah, Saint, that's what you think. Maybe not, Turner. What do you say we play a little pool while we're waiting for the boys? Get away from that pool table. I ain't playing any games with you, Saint. Well, maybe pool was the wrong game. How about a game of pitch and catch? What? Yeah, I pitch like this. Ow! And you catch it like that. Hate to leave you all by yourself there in the side pocket, but like I said, I have a date to keep. Well, Mr. Ritchie, get enough sleep despite my interruption? <laughs> I wasn't really asleep when you called on me, Mr. Templer. I know, Mr. Ritchie. Your hair was a little too carefully combed for a man who's been suddenly awakened and told he's having a fire. You're very clever, Mr. Templer. But not clever enough to catch you before you committed three murders. So you're a smitty silent partner, huh? See what low company's gotten you into, Ritchie? Yes, I see. $400,000 buried in the siding of this elevator shaft. And with the help of this acetylene torch, it'll be all mine. A very ingenious fellow, Qualey. And to think the money never left this building. Hmm. The place where Johnny worked. 
Yes, he was ingenious. It was very smart of him to use his prison job making automobile license plates as a means of smuggling out the information to his wife. How did he do it, Richie? Very simple, Templar. There's an extra piece of thin metal in this particular plate, forming a sort of pocket. And inside the pocket, a note on cigarette paper telling poor Mrs. Qualey how to get the money. Of course, once he managed to tell her the number of the license plate, well, the rest was easy, wasn't it? Yes. All poor Mrs. Qualey had to do was ask the motor vehicle bureau to whom the plate was assigned. Mr. Collins, in this instance. Poor old fellow. Uh, Mr. Temple, would you mind joining me here in the shop, please? Hmm? Yes, right on top of the elevator. I'd like to keep an eye on you while I finish burning out this metal partition. You see, I've only until six o'clock when this elevator is switched on downstairs. Oh, well, I... I... Come, come, in the shop, please. Well, really, I... I I have a gun, Mr. Templer. Oh, well, that makes it official, then. There we are. Careful, Mr. Templer. I wouldn't want anything to happen to you. Anything accidental, that is. You know, it's funny. I've known you such a short time, and I have exactly the same sentiments towards you. I've never been astride the top of an elevator before, Richie. And we're right near the top of the shaft. Yes. <laughs> I don't mean to worry you, Templar. But when this elevator power turns on in a few minutes, it will rise to the top before it descends. How is your treasure hunt coming, Richie? Almost finished. One last strip of metal to cut away and the partition will come off. Then we'll decide your fate, Mr. Templar. Your future. Here goes. A last blow. <laughs> It's there. It's there. I see it. $400,000 in currency, Templar. Think of it. Think of it. You think of it, Richie, and also think of how much blood was spilled on it. Preaching, Templar? You? I never thought. What's that? The elevator, Richie. Maybe it came to work a little early today. (gasps) My my money. My money. Come on, Richie. Come on, get off. No, no, there's still some money left here. I want it. I want it all. All. Come on. We've got to get off. Jump, Richie, jump. No, no, my money. I must save the money. Richie, you fool. All right, I got it. I... Ah! Yes, Richie. You saved your money, and you saved the state some money, too. I'm sure you didn't plan on saving the cost of your execution. <laughs> You have been listening to another adventure of The Saint, the Robin Hood of modern crime. And now, here is our star, Vincent Price. These immortal words of Ovid, translated from the Latin, express quite well indeed the justice of our Mr. Ritchie's fate. Nor is there any juster law than that the contrivers of death should perish by their own contrivances. This is Vincent Price inviting you to join us again next week at this same time for another exciting adventure of The Saint. Good night. Tonight's script of The Saint was written by Michael Cramoy. Our cast included Laureen Tuttle, Barney Phillips, Tony Barrett, Fred Howard, and Dan O'Herlihy. The music was composed and conducted by Harry Zimmerman. The Saint is a James L. Sapir production and was transcribed and directed by Thomas A. McAvity. All you Saint fans will be glad to know that the Saint comic books are on sale at all newsstands. Your announcer, Merrill Ross. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. <laughs>